Even before the term DevSecOps was coined and I wrote the DevSecOps Manifesto, it, the, the concept of the original Build Security In initiative was essentially what we're calling DevSecOps now, but it was pre-DevOps. So of course that phrase couldn't do it, couldn't use it. But it was really more about automation and, and letting developers sort of have a bigger role in building the security into the product as opposed to waiting and tacking it on, bolting it on um, after the fact, which is the way security has sort of been traditionally done over the years. Now, getting from that old traditional way to a more modern developer-oriented way, so along that journey, I've, I've gained, quote, a lot of experience, meaning I, I've made a lot of mistakes in the course of in the course of doing that. So the first challenge in fixing or repairing or improving a DevSecOps program is to get the mindset right. And, and so uh, we often believe that we can achieve DevSecOps if only we create more relevant and consumable policies, if only we get better enforcing those policies, if only we implement the right metrics-based incentives, if only we train better uh, especially the developers. If only we work better, collaborate better with engineering via a champion program, um, it, or maybe it's all about tools. If only they had the right tools and integrated them the right way. So all of these things are sort of on the right track, although I will take a slightly different angle on the policy sort of lines here. Um, but there, that alone won't get you to a program that will go across an enterprise. And, and you need a systematic approach to changing the culture of the organization, both the security side of that culture and the engineering side of that culture. And, and so what I'm gonna to talk to you about here is what I call a transformation blueprint for DevSecOps. Um, so this, this works. When we did this at Comcast, we started with an experiment with only 10 engineering teams out of the 600. Um, and we gathered data. In fact, I spent about half of my first year budget on putting in place a metric system so we could learn, basically. You know that, that first slide where I said, you, you know, I've made every mistake in the book? Well, I had numbers to show when I made a mistake. And, and I also had numbers to show when something we did was really very effective or even ones that were effective, but not, not enough to justify the energy we put into them, or not enough to sort of be done before we do something else that was more effective. So these numbers are really important, and, and I'm a, an analytics guy. In fact, all of my open source projects are data and analytics oriented. And so I spent a lot of energy building the metric system, and the data gathering system is actually more the more of the effort to be able to prove that the changes we were making were actually not just a like not just spreading far and wide that's one metric but actually reducing vulnerabilities of the company reducing risk in in production and so the teams the first 157 teams we put through the program um they had one sixth as many vulnerabilities as the teams that were not in the program. And you could say, well, maybe there's a selection bias there. We also did within subjects analysis. So we had data from the teams before they were in the program and, and after they sort of graduated from the program. And that the data held true. It was still about one sixth of uh, as many. So a you know, five fold, six fold improvement in risk reduction. The other interesting thing is that the amount of resources we needed in security in terms of managing this program was one fourth as many as the people we needed to manage this program for 600 development teams before. We had about 40 full-time equivalents just doing application security vulnerability management. Um, and by the end of this time, at the end of the five years, we had zero people doing application security vulnerability management. So we saved that and we only replaced them with about 10 people. Um, you know, running the program that, that I'm going to describe to you here. Um, so we're talking about mindset here. So one of the other things that people sort of think is, oh, if we just put some DevOps lipstick on this traditional way of thinking about application security, that's what we'll call DevSecOps. Well, that's not DevSecOps to me. 
And as a matter of fact, I actually have drifted away. You know, I wrote the DevSecOps Manifesto all those years ago, but I drifted away from that term because it's gotten overloaded by a lot of folks who sort of use this, this, uh, this definition on the left. Uh, you know, just throw some tools at it. Just sort of do it the old way, but expect maybe developers to do or just collaborate more. No, that's not what we mean. What we mean, um, I think, is better represented by the term developer-centric application security, sometimes shift left. And, and now at the company I work for, Contrast, we say shift smart.